Today I'm going to show you how to do some buffalo check painting yourself without using a um, poster, um, without using any paper that's already done, okay? I'm just going to show you how to paint it straight out. Okay, first thing we're going to do, we're going to paint, paint this board white. And it's chalk paint, so it just takes a couple minutes to dry. This is just Waverly chalk paint from Walmart in white. I'm doing the sides as well because this will be sitting up and both sides potentially can be seen. This is a flower pot stand that you can use to do different sets of flowers on. I have this flower pot thingy here from Crafty Tessie. There's the whole thing. And uh, you, you've got different boards here that you can put different flowers on. She sells this as a kit, but she doesn't sell that many rounds. I think it only comes with two. So I'm going to go ahead and paint this and then dry it real quick with a heat gun just takes like a minute actually. It's very easy to do. All you need is paint and the blue painter's tape to do this. It's very easy. So I'll show you how to do it. Probably like, we can probably do it like in 30 minutes or less. I'm not sure I haven't timed it but it shouldn't take very long. Let me um, dry part of this and then I'll put on a little bit more so it'll be a, a clear layer. I'm going to turn on the heat gun, okay? This just takes like a minute, it's not very loud. Oh, I thought it was plugged up, sorry about that. The first thing you do is you paint your bottom layer white, all white, and then you can use any color of paint and painter's tape, and that's all you need to paint buffalo check on something. Can everyone hear me? Can y'all please comment and let me know that you're listening, you can hear me or not? If you don't have a um, heat gun, you can also use a hair dryer. I see a lot of people using hair dryers when they do painting. It's almost dry already, you see? This doesn't take long at all. 
I see a couple of spots here that's a little thicker than the rest. Okay, it looks dry to me. Oh yeah, it's dry. Okay, now I'm going to paint one more layer on top of this one just to have a good coat of white. This goes really fast. You'll be surprised how fast it goes. If you like the buffalo style, buffalo check, then you will love this that you can do it yourself without having to without having to purchase something that's already done. It's just easy as I don't know what. The other night I did the other side of this. It's purple. There it is. And it I don't even think it took me 30 minutes to do the entire process. I just want to make sure that all of this is white and not wood colored because it is going to be buffalo check. So it needs to be all white. The first layer needs to be all white. Like I said, it doesn't take long at all. Maybe 30 minutes to do the whole process. Maybe 45, but I don't think so. But you'll get the idea here in just a second how it's done. Okay, I think that's pretty well white. I'm going to um, take one more minute and dry this top coat, and then we'll get on to the coloring part, the colored Okay, great. I'm glad. Welcome, Thana and Martiza and Kay. Thank you all for joining me today. I'm doing a Buffalo Check style pastel colored light blue. And I'm showing you how to do this today so you can do it yourself without having to purchase something. This is so much fun and it's very easy. I can probably have this whole thing done with all the colors in probably about 30 minutes. Just in between the layers, if you don't have time to let it set and dry, I'm using a heat gun. This is Crafter's Companion. Or you can use a blow dryer, whichever you prefer. But this is very fun. I promise you, you're going to love it. And all you need is paint, a board to paint on. You don't even need the hair dryer if you've got all day to do it. Like, I came in here the other day, I did one layer. Hi, Kathy. And then um, I walked away for like 30 minutes. I came back. It was ready. It just goes by really quickly. You just want to make sure each layer is dry in between. Or else you can have a big mess. Once you put the tape on there, if it's not dry, it will pull up the paint. And I can see the barely wet spots. I don't know if you can or not, but I can. They're just barely, barely wet. I did this one the other day, and it didn't take me long at all. If y'all want to get out something and try this with me, all you need is paint, a hair dryer or a heat gun, a paintbrush, of course, and painter's tape. And that's all you need. This is so you don't have to buy your craft paper or anything else that's already done. You just do it yourself and it's very easy. Okay, all I did was paint this white. This is going to be my, um, what is this called? A, paint, a, a flower pot and I have these rounds to go up top. You can either paint this or like I'm going to do, I'm going to glue some flowers to the top of it here. I'm just going to cut them right off the stem and glue it on. Okay, so the first thing you want to do after you dry that is get your painter's tape. And I usually start in the middle. I'm going to put a piece of tape here so I don't go over on this Okay, now I'm going to start from here and just start in the center. 
It doesn't have to be exactly in the center, just wherever you want to start, really. But you want to make sure both sides of this paint, of this painter's tape, is down because you don't want your glue to bleed, and I mean your paint to bleed under that. And then you're going to use one piece as your spacer. You put it here beside the next one, beside of this first one, and just you don't have to put it all the way down because that one's not going to stay. But this one will stay. You just make line after line after line. Put this right up against that one. And take this one up. Put it here as your spacer. Put it right up against it, but not on top. And make sure this other piece is all the way down. Hello, everyone. Yes, please share if you don't mind. That would be a, much appreciated. Okay, you just want to make sure this tape is all the way down because if it's not, your paint will bleed under it and it will not look good. It will not look as good. Now I'm going to put this piece down here next, right up next to that one. And this is your spacer here, so take it up and put it down on this side again. And there's just a barely tip right there, but we still need to do it because it'll look off if we don't do it. Okay, now this is your spacer, so we're going to take it up and we're going to put it back on the other side. You're just going to go straight here in a row and you're going to get it as straight as you can. You're going to use this one as your spacer going this way. Put it right up next to that other blue piece there. But this is not going to stay, so you don't want to lay it all the way down. This one will stay. Put it right up against that piece without any cracks. And make sure this piece is laid all the way down. And make sure you push both sides of the tape down. So there's no bleeding under that piece of tape from the paint. Now here's your spacer. Put it right up next to that. And put another piece of tape down for your line. And then here's your spacer. Put it right up next to that blue tape there, the one before. And then make sure you put a little piece here because you don't want it to be too wide, this last piece. You want it to look uniform. So now what we're going to do now, we're going to paint it the lightest color that you have. Whether you use pink, yellow, purple, or blue, you want to use the lightest color. So I'm going to use a little white mixed in with my light blue here. Now you just want to paint each stripe. You paint each stripe and then we're going to dry it for like a minute. If you'll share this on your page, you will have it to go back to whenever you want to look at it. If you want to try this after we're off this live, it'll be on your page. So you can go back and look at it to see how to do it exactly. Hope I got that one down good enough. Okay, so all you want to do is paint this bottom level. The first level the lightest color that you're going to use of the blue or green or turquoise or yellow or pink, whatever, but just the lightest color you have. And 
and just do it sideways. That way you don't push up any of the tape, the painter's tape. See, it's already starting to dry. This doesn't take long at all to dry. Okay, let's dry it real quick. It'll take like a minute or less. Use your hair dryer or your glue gun, I mean your heat gun. <laughs> What's everybody doing today? Hi, Ann. Teresa, hello, hello. Thank you for sharing. Hi, Judy. I love that you all are here. Please share. A lot of people want to know how to do this. I've had a lot of requests to see if I knew how to do it, and I did. So, that's what we're going to do today. This is so much fun to do. It's such a satisfying project when you get done. It's just like, looks so great. You can use any color that you want. Thank you, Ann. Hi, Judy. We're doing a buffalo check style here today. It'll probably take us about 30 minutes. In between layers, you blow this dry because you don't want to put tape down on a wet surface because it will pull it straight up. Would y'all please like the video? Share, subscribe, follow, all that fun stuff. <laughs> What is everybody doing today? Are y'all crafting? Are you making wreaths? Okay, it looks dry. Okay, that is dry. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to take these pieces of tape off. Hopefully it didn't bleed. So far, so good. I don't want to take this piece of tape off here because I don't want to go over on any other surface. This, I want it to be all white. So far, so good. Oh, there was a, a divot in the wood, so that is a little messed up, so I have to make sure that that gets painted another color. No, it's not gonna stay white. So what I'm going to do now is, let me see here. No, you know what we're gonna do? We're gonna start from the side over here and use this piece here as our spacer. We'll put it here in between this white and this first layer. I think we already went over on that right there. But okay, it's down on the line now. Okay, this piece here is our spacer. You're going to get a piece of painter's tape and put it in between. Well, you're going to put it on the side of this and right up next to it because you don't want there to be any cracks or creases. You can use a new piece of tape. That's what I did the other night and it's going to help if I do that because I can see each line better. You want to use a piece of tape that will go all the way across and put it right up next to that spacer because it's not going to stay. The spacer is not going to stay so you don't want to have any cracks in between that. Okay, that looks good. When you take up this spacer, you're going to want to take both of your fingers and push this all the way down because you don't want the paint to bleed under. Okay? Put your spacer piece down again so you'll know where to go next. This just keeps it even. Put it right up next to that other piece of tape so there's no cracks in between there. You want it to be exactly spot on. Take up your spacer piece and use two fingers to get each side of this 
tape to stay down well because you don't want the paint to bleed. Now you use your spacer tape and you put it down right up next to that other piece of tape you just put down. Then you put another piece of tape down right up next to it. Take your spacer piece up. Push down the tape on both sides. Thank you so much, Ann. I appreciate you so much. You're just a doll. You put your spacer piece, but don't put it all the way down because you're going to pull it right back up. Put another piece of tape right up next to that one where there's no cracks. Push it down. Make sure it's laid down really good so the paint does not bleed. There's my spacer piece. I don't know why I laid it over there. I'm going to lay it right here next to this one because part of the feet is going to have to be taped up. Just a very small piece, but it still does have to be taped up. Okay, we have to go right here to the end. And just do that last little piece there. And this side as well. It's just a tiny, tiny piece. You can barely see it. But if you don't do it, then it's going to look bigger than the rest. Okay, let's take up the spacer piece here. Put it over here to the side. And we're going to paint this piece now a little darker than this other color was. You start off with the lightest color and you get darker as you go along. So the last one that you do is going to be the darkest one. Let me put a little piece of, a little bit of white in this paint here. And cool. Okay, now you're just going to paint these lines. Going this way now. Don't go side to side when you put the tape this way because you don't want the paint to bleed under the tape. You want it to be perfectly crisp lines as best as you can get it. And each time you put down a new layer you will see that it starts adding dimension to your piece as well as a little bit of change in color each time you put it down. Does anybody have any questions? Yay, you're off today. Great. Does anyone have any questions about this process? Feel free to ask anything you want. Hi, Denise. Hello, Christy. Are y'all doing okay today? Don't forget to like. If we were to get a hundred people on here today, I would give away something. A sign. Probably a sign, yes, a sign. Everybody likes to get the signs. So y'all share away. I just want to make sure this is a little bit darker than the first layer we put down. And then it'll take a minute to dry it, and then we'll move on to the next next layer. And the next layer will be the last layer. So see, it goes by pretty fast. Oh, thank you, Ann. Do you understand everything I'm doing? Are you going to try it?
Hi there. Are y'all going to try this? I think it's fun. I love doing this. I did it last night. I'm doing it again tonight. All you do is you use a hair dryer or a heat gun to make sure your paint is drying because you don't want to put a piece of tape down while your paint is wet or else your paint will come straight back up. You have to make sure it's dry. Oh, I think I have a spot there. See, it dries so fast. appreciate you all for being here. I'm glad I can teach y'all something. I love doing this process. For me, it's so much fun. Is, is anybody going to try this? This is the buffalo check. All you need is paint, any color of paint you want. You need to start off with white. You need painter's tape and a paintbrush. And that's it. Literally, that's it. This should have been taken off. Uh oh, hold on just a second. I think I forgot to take off a piece. Okay, I did forget to take off a piece. What am I doing? Okay, that's fine though. It's so easy to easily easily fix. It looks a different color because this is already dry. Okay, easily fixed. No, no problem, no problem. Good, I love doing this. I hope y'all do too. Great, Kathy. Hi, Jenny. Okay, I'm so glad. It is easy. It just takes a little time and to remember what you have to do. Oh, yeah, it is fun. Okay, and what we're going to do next, we're going to go back and add a piece of tape to where the, we had it in the very beginning if you if you were here you could see it's real light where the first line was that we had paint on but you'll be able to tell okay I think it's all dry howdy girl <laughs> yes I think it will look really nice in a garage are you going to do like one wall? Okay, that's done. Now I want my next one just a little darker. Okay, if you only have one, co one color of paint, if you don't have variations, like I have three different colors, but two of them I think is the same. This one's a little lighter. But if you only have one color of paint, after you do the white layer, you want to add like a lot of white to make the first soft layer. And then the second layer of color, you would add just a tad of the white. And then the third layer, you would add straight color with no white added to the paint. Or a little darker, like I'm going to add this navy blue. Oh, I've never opened it. And with this, uh, I'm just going to add like a touch into this color so I can make it a little tad darker. I mean, literally, just a touch, just that much in a little egg, egg uh, carton here, and with this other color. It doesn't have to be exactly the same color as long as it's some sort of variations. Okay, now what you want to do, you want to go back and add paint to everywhere that you had it in the beginning. And okay, I started in the middle. I can see the lines here. Barely, but I can see them. 
because we're going to do the darkest check that's left to do now. And this is where it all comes together. Make sure both sides of that paint is put down because you do not want your paint to bleed. Make sure the tape is put down well on both sides. You do not want it to bleed. You put the tape everywhere that it was the first time. Because you're going to do the darkest check now. And if you need help, if you can't see the lines very well, use your spacer piece. But I can see them. It's just little, it's very light. Okay. Yes, it is a teal, and then I've just added blue to the, to make the, um, the darker shade. It says it's a pool blue, but it's more of a teal. Make sure both sides of that tape is all the way down, or it, your project will really be kind of ruined because it's just not going to look as well. Let me put this here to make sure that's in the right place. This is my spacer piece. If you'll share this on your page, you can always go back and look it up and see how to do it. Some of these lines is hard to see, so I just want to make sure I get it right. The very tip of that has got to be done right there. Now make sure this is down good because this is going to be the darkest color. Okay, let me get my paint here. Okay. Oops, I think that just popped up. Now what you're going to do now, you're just going to paint those squares. Or you can paint it all the way down, you know, it doesn't really matter. If you just paint the squares themselves, or if you paint over the tape. But you can see it's crisscrossed here. So it's just every other block is going to need to be painted dark. Does anyone have any questions? As long as you follow these simple steps, it's pretty easy. Nothing's really hard about it. It's just you have to do one step at a time and let it dry. If you don't let it dry in between, you'll just have a big mess. It's not going to look near as good as it would. I mean, it'll just be pulled up. The paint will pull up when you put the tape down. See, I didn't have three different colors of blue. I added white to the lightest one, and I added a dark navy blue to the darkest, to the last set of colors. So I would have the variations in color. I thought I had enough different colors, but it seemed, out, seemed like they were all too close. So I just added white to the first pool of color. And then the second pool of color, I used it straight out of the bottle. And then the third bit of color, I added a little bit of navy blue to it. And if you were to use pink, you would do the same thing. You would add like fuchsia or a little bit of red to the pink to make it the dark color. Or if you was to do yellow, you might want to add like a little orange or something to make the dark color. You just fix it how you want it to be, you know what I'm saying? You get it, the colors that you want it to be. Thank you for sharing, I appreciate that. Now I'm gonna take one more 
it, it is pretty easy. It's just a little time. You know, like I did a bigger one, and it just takes a little time. That's all. But to, if you use chalk paint, it's a lot better because it dries a lot faster. A lot faster. And the, actually, these colors in between are not all chalk paint. Some of these are acrylic. The white is chalk paint, and the navy blue is chalk paint. But it's not like you're putting on so much color in between. It's not like a lot of color. It's just a little bit of color to the chalk paint, so it dries pretty quickly. This is the color of flowers we're going to put on the top. I think these two colors together will be pretty. Do y'all like these? With the contrast, the teal and the peachy looking coral. See, this is already almost dry. It looks dry, but I'm just going to do it a little bit longer just to double check and make sure, sure, sure it's done. That right there, when you do the ends, when it's just a little bit taped down, it's hard to get it all the way down. And that one popped up. I may have to go back and do that one a little bit, but I don't think so, really. I'm not selling this piece unless somebody just approaches me and wants to purchase it. Good, Judy. I'm glad you like it. Okay, it looks like it's all drying. So, I'm going to pull up the paint and see how it looks. Yay! This is my favorite part right here. We're just going to go backwards and take off the tape. See, that did bleed over on that a little bit. Let me see. I've got some water here. <laughs> that did bleed over a little bit right here. I don't know if you can see it or not, but I can. What is crafting paint? Do you mean like uh, this kind of paint, like acrylic paint? Like from Walmart, Apple Barrel, and Deco Art, and Craft Smart, those kind of paints? Is that craft paint? Any kind of paint will work. Yes, the unrevealing. This is my favorite part. I just wanted to see if I could fix that there on the end to the lighter color. I'm just going to put a tad, tad, tad right there. Now I think that's going to be fine right there. That was the colors that it was before. It's not very much, it's probably not very straight, but it probably looks straight from there. The unrevealing. The unveiling. Uh oh. There's those divots in the wood. I don't know what I could have done differently about that, but I can go back and add. I just want to make sure that one's good and dry there. Okay, so I'm taking off these. See, as you can see, that right there, see, you, can you see that it's just barely went over a little bit? Because even though I thought the paint was all the way down, the tape, the painter's tape was all the way down, it's still crossed over just a tad. Now this in between here is tape, so don't worry about that part. What I'm talking about is just a little bit of bleed. Wood filler, yes. That's, I didn't realize it was there until I started and then... Whoa, how pretty! I love this color and it's gonna look so good with this coral. Wow, I love that. It's so pretty. Can you all see the variations in the colors? Each one is a different color. Oh my goodness, it's so pretty. Yes, 
Chalk paint is the best one. I heard you say chalk paint, but it looks like both are okay. Yes, I'm using both, and both are okay. My first time watching from Canton, from Cochran, Georgia. Wow, my family's from Dalton, Georgia. What do y'all think about this? Do you think it turned out good? You can probably see some little bleeding on it. But um, for me, it will be okay. Can you see each corner? I love it. I think it's beautiful. It probably is from the layering, but I mean, you kind of have to do it that way unless you like wait till the next day or several hours later. But um, I learned something else the other day too. Yeah, because it said each corner. I know you can take like a black marker and do this little squiggly thing. A real light black marker and you just go like, just barely, like you're trying to draw a line down there, but just barely, barely move it. And then crisscross all the lines, you know, follow the lines in between. And then you can never tell that it bled over at all. But I love these color variations. I love it. Now what we're going to do is put the flowers on top. Let me put these away here. Oh, actually this one that I did yesterday with the purple would look good with it too. Don't you think that looks good as well? Oh, wow, I love that. I think it's beautiful. But I have that, this color flower for this side with the purple. You can sit these on your table or anywhere really you want to. And I'm going to put this color with the teal. Let me show you how to do that. This is what comes with the kit, two of these. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut these, the top of the flowers off. And then I'm going to glue them on here. And yesterday I did it with these green leaves, but today I don't think I'm going to. Maybe I will, let me see. Well, the leaves are so far down. I will probably put in a few leaves here and there, but I'm not gonna do as many as I did the other day. You just take your clippers and clip right up against the bottom of the flower. Let me see if it says what kind of flowers these are. I don't think so. These were $10, they're Ashland. Okay, they're Gerber Bush. And I think these come from Ellis Pottery or Sims. I think these came from Sims last summer. Okay, now what we're going to do is we will flip this over. And staple this to the top. Now I have my hot glue ready. And seven big buds will work perfectly. It will make it look full and fluffy. So the first one I'm going to put in the center. And kind of hold it down for a second so it will dry. Okay, and because it has this little bump here, it will dry either one way or the other. It won't dry, it probably won't dry straight up and down. Well, that one kind of did. Now I'm just going to go around with my little Gerber daisies.
money. I did some buffalo check. Here I showed y'all how to do this. If you'd like to see how the process is done, just share the video on your page and you can go back and watch it. It's so easy. I don't think, let me see how long did it take. Does it say how long we've been on here? I can't see until I get off here. But if anybody else can tell, let me know how long it took. You just want to cut these flowers as close to the base of the bottom of the flower as you can. Hi everyone. Hello Connie. Connie and Connie came in. Earlier, Teresa and Teresa came in. <laughs> That's so cool, huh? Did everybody get the gist of this? Or um, would y'all like for me to do another tutorial later of the same process? Or if y'all just go back and watch the live, y'all probably get, get it that way. But I'm more than happy to do it again later if y'all would like. It took 32 minutes. Good. It didn't take too long. That's what I thought. I thought it would take about 30 minutes or so. Okay. There is the finished product without any green leaves. Let me span out a little. Okay. Can you see it pretty well now? I think I am going to add some green leaves to it though. Because these leaves are pretty here. I love these. I'm just going to put them on the outside though. I'm not going to put them all throughout like I did the purple ones or the pink ones. Does anyone have any questions at all? I want to make sure you you know exactly what to do when you go in to do it yourself. Thank you, Janie. Did you see the process of the buffalo check? Side there some. There we go. Yes, me. I believe it's a nice contrast. Probably less time. You are explaining that takes time. That's true. It does. But yesterday I was doing the same thing, and it took me just about as long. But it's because the paint has to dry, and you have to dry it, and all that good stuff. Let me get another glue stick here. They're right here beside of me. Let me zoom back in. And then I want to put this one up in there. Do y'all like it with the green leaves as well? I do. I think it looks good. It looks more natural. <laughs> Have y'all ever heard of this? When you put in a glue stick, you know like it, how it likes to fall out every time? If you'll put just a tad, just a tad, or else it'll spill out through there. A tad bit of glue up on there and stick it to the other glue stick, it will stay. And it won't keep falling out. Oh, okay. Yeah, Janie, if you'll just share this on your page, board, your board or 
It's a board. Yeah, this is a board. Green would be nice. I think so too. Yeah, I like the contrast of the green leaves inside. Yes, I know. Isn't that so neat? I love that trick. The first couple of times I put a big glob on there because I thought it wouldn't take it, but it doesn't need a big glob. It just needs like a little, a little dot of glue to stick to the other piece of glue stick. And I'm putting these in between the flowers, like on down in there some, so they're not sticking extremely way far out. I like this. I think it's very pretty. Good, Judy. Good. Hope you do try it. I hope you try the buffalo check, too. I may do another one. I need to do one on YouTube as well. And if I can't get this video to transfer over to YouTube, then I'll have to do one over there. So, what do y'all think? Let me open this space up some. There's the bottom. Can you see it? There's the bottom. There's the top. With the flowers. <laughs> Sorry about that. Do y'all have any questions? Thank you all for joining me. I appreciate it so much. If you don't care, please like the video. Follow my page. Will you be putting on a bow? Yes! Oh, I'm sorry. I forgot about that part. I made a little white bow I was going to put here because this has a place to put zip ties. So I was thinking about just putting this little little bow there, just gluing it on. Do you like that or do you think I need a bigger bow? I really don't think it needs a lot, but if y'all have any suggestions... Hi, Jackie. So, do y'all like the buffalo check? With the coral flowers and the green leaves? I think it's beautiful. Do y'all think this bow is enough, or do you think it needs a bigger bow? A bigger one. Let me see what I have. Coral and turquoise. I could put, do you like this on here? It would be too close in color. Or I, actually, I could put them both on. I could put both of these, make a little hand bow with both of these, and that's both of the same colors. Let me go ahead and make one with these two. That way I can show y'all how to make a bow. Let me move some of this stuff back. Okay, I will show y'all how to make a hand bow, okay? To make a bow by hand. These are very simple just have to pay close attention and I have to talk where you understand exactly what I'm saying. First thing you want to do is cut a little uh, chevron in the bottom to make that little boutique style look. Cut it in half and from that folded side cut down towards the end at a V angle. Okay, what we'll do right here. Hi, Debbie and Tim. Hi, everyone. 
Okay, let me show you how to make a hand bow. <clears throat> First thing you want to do is get, say, a 12 inch tail and make a 6 inch loop. Now we're going to make a 5 inch loop. Actually, that's going to be way too long for my thing. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Let me do that again. Here is an 8 inch tail. You just hold it in your left hand, whichever one is your is not your dominant hand. Okay, sure. So I go to my kitchen, my tablecloth, navy blue, buffalo plaid. You would think I never saw my table before. So glad I caught this. Okay. <clears throat> you pinch it right here at the eight inch mark, and then you make a loop. You bring it back to the pinch and pinch it again. Now, you just bring the ribbon over top and meet here in the middle where I pinched it. Bring these both up to see if they're about even. If they're not, make them even. I throw my ribbon in the floor if it's in the way. <clears throat> now you want to take okay this is pretty on one side and not so pretty on the other side so you want to take your ribbon around and loop it back to the center make sure these two are about the same size if not make them the same size and this piece over here you always keep the pretty side on the top where when you come around and make a loop because this has a pretty design on it. You don't want to twist it all upside down and all that. This is one way to do this without twisting the ribbon. So these are about the same. You would take this ribbon and go under on this side and meet here in the center. Pinch it all there together. Make sure these are the same size. If they're not, make them the same size. Yes, Judy, it is for you. Just for you. Now this side, you want to loop around from the bottom, up and around, and meet there in the center again. Now there's three loops on each side. Okay, can y'all see? <clears throat> I just gathered it all in my hand. And now I'm going to do this one on top of it. I'm going to do about an 8 inch tail again. Pinch it there in the center. And then go under on this side. And meet here in the center. Keep the loops just a little tad smaller since we went another color. That way you can see the bottom one. We went over on that one. Now we went under. Now this side we're going to do over. So we keep the pretty side on top. Want to make sure they're both the same size loops by pulling them up like that. If they're not, make them both the same size. Okay, now we're going to go over this way on top and meet here in the center. And this one will go under and meet here in the center. And you're just going to squeeze it all in place from the side. Okay, there we go. Now we're going to cut this at about 8 inches and do the dovetail. Fold your ribbon and from the folded side cut down towards the end at a at an angle. Now this is what I do. I get a zip tie. Or you can use uh, another piece of ribbon. You can use a zip tie. You can use a floral stem. Or you can use a chenille tie. You can use anything else you want to use. But I use a zip tie because you can tighten them so much tighter 
and you can pull the ribbons as hard as you want to, the loops, and it will not come undone. You put the zip tie right in through there, and you're going to pull it almost all the way, but I want to leave room so I can put a chenille stem in here. Let me grab one. Okay, now you want to put your chenille stem or whatever you're going to add it to your item with in behind there and then pull your zip tie very, very tight. As tight as you can. Do you cut through the top wire for the ducktail? Yes, I cut both ends. Well, I thought I did. And it's a dovetail. D-O-V-E. Dovetail. And now we're going to flip, um, fluff the bow. I like to hold it with all of this right here so I don't cut that off yet. You can put on as many bows or as few bows as you would like. Loops, as many ribbon colors as you want that matches your. Whoopsie. I'm just trying to make these loops a little bit smaller. But do you like these colors together? Now you take the loop at the bottom, this, the bottom tail, and you curl them under with your fingers. That makes a big difference. Okay, now I'm going to cut off my zip tie. as close as I can to the project so I don't scratch anything. And now I can well, I don't know if I'm going to be able to stick those in there or not, but I can glue them on or whatever I want to do. I can put it here or here to the side. I like it better in the center, I think. What do y'all think? It could be a little big for this, but I wanted to show y'all how to make a bow. Well, I'm not going to use that. Now I can take the two little ends here and tie it here in the center. I did get this set from Crafty Tessie back in July or August of last year, I believe. Okay, what do y'all think? Yeah, I like it better in the center, too. Hi, Holly. Okay, here's buffalo check that we did, the flower that we did, and the bow that we did. It's all so pretty together. I got that turned upside down, I believe. But anyways, I think it's so pretty, the colors together. Do y'all like it? I do, I think it's pretty. Y'all make sure you put the word live 
in the comments if you would like to get a notification of when I go live. Sometimes I just post it on the front top of the page and other times I send out a notice. But if you put the li word live, thank you Judy, I love it too, I think it's very pretty. If you put the word live in the comments, it will connect you with my bot. But you have to answer her. She don't like being ignored. Thank you, Cindy. I'm glad you all love it. I do too. I will post it on my page and let everyone see it. Thank you all for coming. Please like and share. And if y'all don't care, if you go to my YouTube page, which is also a Buttercup Creations on YouTube, and subscribe, that would make me so extremely happy. You just don't know. I'm having such a hard time getting to 3,000. And when I get to 3,500, I'm going to do a big giveaway of a Probo. Probo the hand when I get to 3,500 on, um, on YouTube. Yes, that's right, on YouTube. Thank you all. Whenever you get a, a message from the bot, please answer her. Either say live again or yes. You just have to respond to her. So she knows you're serious about wanting a notification of when I go live. Don't forget to go over to my YouTube page and subscribe. Does anyone have any questions about this? Or did you get to see the bow? Did y'all know how to make a hand bow already? Thank you, Holly. I appreciate that. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Anne. Thank you, Judy, Bonnie, Ann, Kay, Holly, Kay, Ann, <laughs> Cindy. I love you all so much for joining me today. Thank you so much, and I hope you all have a great afternoon. A great weekend as well. I'll see you all again tomorrow, maybe on another live. Well, definitely you will see me tomorrow on another live. Thank you, everyone. I appreciate it. Y'all have a great day. If y'all have any questions or comments, do you cut through the top wire? Oh, yes. I already answered that one, yeah. Thank you. I appreciate it, y'all. See you next time. Bye-bye.